So this is a very quick orbit decompression. Um, the key thing with orbit decompression is do thorough sinus surgery because you never want to have to go back and do sinus surgery in someone you've done an orbit decompression on. That's, that's not fun. The fat herniates into the sinus cavities and, it, and it's tough. So uh, my colleagues have already done a very nice ethmoidectomy. I did come back and peel off the mucosa, which is key because we want this lamina to, um, to come off easily. Do you have a... Um, Lakesley, this will work. That would work too. <laughs> so we'll just peel that right off. And I like the sphenoidotomy is key just to act as your landmark. We can open this up now. And it's also sometimes you have to look at why you're doing the orbit decompression in the first place. If it's for thyroid eye disease, sometimes the problem, as, as Dr. Mario will tell you, it's at the cone. It's at the apex of the cone and the extraocular muscles are really, really thick. And you have to take this not only to the base of the orbit, but through the base and into the sphenoid sinus, almost as an optic nerve decompression. But once you get this exposed, you ought to be able to get in with a, do you have a uh, curette? Either a curette or, or um, just a, a freer. And, you know, it's always interesting to me, when you want to go through lamina, the lamina is really thick. When you don't want to go through the lamina, it's actually paper thin. So uh, sometimes with these orbit decompressions, you, ha you just have to keep palpating until you find the nice soft part of the lamina. And I'm just going to fracture this out. You would want to take out all of these little pieces as you go along. The key is to try to avoid going through the periorbit at the beginning, because once you start to get that periorbit, uh, if you do go through it, the fat will herniate. And we're gonna take this all the way back. I may not do it today, because I'm gonna take it back until I have to drill, and then we'll stop, just because I wanna get you guys operating. Um, but you can see this a suction freer is a fantastic, we're gonna avoid that artery up, up top, little posterior ethmoid there. And we're gonna take, if you continue in this natural trajectory, see how I'm going up towards skull base? That's not where we wanna go. The apex of the orbit is down here, right above the roof of the maxillary sinus. So you always have to remind yourself, stay low, stay low, stay low, to try to get back into this part. As the bone gets hard, rather than continuing to fracture, come back in with your diamond drill and drill down this part here. But I'm not gonna do it today, we're just gonna try to get around the corner and can I have the uh, that spear knife where you're not crazy when you say that the bone seems thicker the actual inflammatory process inside the orbit can kind of extend towards that bone I think that is a reactive process for the ethmoids the ethmoids actually do get a little thicker in thyroid eye disease all right so we'll take the spear knife and just and then there's a there's a U-shaped blade over there as well in that kit. Uh, when you come through with the spear knife, think about what's, what you know. It's just like shooting a gun. You don't want to, you, you want to know your background. You want to know what your target is behind it. So you don't want to go through pass point and hit medial rectus, which in thyroid eye disease is really close. The other thing you don't want to do is put that spear knife right back here next to the bone because we're gonna bring in a U-shaped knife, and so if you are right here, you can't get the knife in. If you come at just a couple millimeters in front, and then just use the tip, and this is a classic University of Washington uh, knife that's usually dull, but it actually worked just fine here. So we're gonna <laughs> cut it like that. We dulled it just for it. And then this uh, wonderful, this is not quite what we use. We use an ortholock blade, but it's the same idea. This is a, a, just a sickle knife. And we're going to come in, and I'm going to continue to tent this periorbit towards me. I'm not diving into the orbit. I'm pulling it out towards me. This needs to go right there. It's staying up nice and high. And then we're going to come back and do it down low. So this is for a medial orbit decompression. The inferior orbit, you just do the same thing, but through the uh, maxillary sinus. And once you get down here, we're going to get all these pieces out. And I've never found, Ray, so Ray has published the largest series of, of uh, endoscopic DCRs, but you've also done a lot of orbit decompressions. 
there's, I've never found a name for the, the, uh, the tissue that covers the orbital fat. We've taken down lamina, we've taken down periorbit, but, but there's always this tissue. Do you have a sickle knife? open up the fibrous annulus of Zinn. And, and to, to actually get there, as you correctly said yes. earlier, and it's those white fibers just posterior to where you are. And I think in the interest of time, you're not doing it. Correct. But you have to, if you're doing a thyroid eye disease, you really have to get your drill out. And, and I appreciate you not doing it here because of the interest of time. Well, but, that, that really depends if you're dealing with, a, with an optic neuropathy. Yeah, but that's what I'm talking about, thyroid optic neuropathy, not just cosmesis. Right. I'm not talking about cosmetic eye disease. Because you, if you don't deal with the fibrous annulus of Zinn, you're not going to decompress at the orbital apex. And that's really and, uh, where the large majority Takashi. of the problem lies. So, and I think or Dr. Like Marty would agree with that as well. Um, <clears throat> we go, we go, John, we go the into eye. the sphenoid. Yes, yeah, so we go John, into the sphenoid. I'm, talking about, I'm not talking not about work, an optic so. nerve decompression, just an orbital. Yeah. We just go into the sphenoid just until you've identified the fibrous annulus. And once you've identified the fibrous analyst and you release that, that releases all the pressure in the orbital apex. So and after, you, correct. So yep. after you've done that, make sure you've taken down, I used a sickle knife just to go through a little bit of the fat. It helps yep. break down these little fibrous connections. And I pulled off the rest of the periorbit. Now Dr. Mahdi is palpating the eye. And when Retro, we- Retropulsing. When we uh, first started doing this, I was shocked how hard he pushes, but this is a good thing. And you don't always have, you may think, you know what, I'm not going to treat thyroid eye disease, but you're going to get an abscess in the orbit, and this is a great way to get to that. Um, hematoma in the orbit, this is a great way to decompress it.